Good morning once again to you all and welcome to our this time professional women's networking forum rather than the Monday Motivation Spotlight. We had a double session today so many of you have joined from the first section and some of you have just joined now or are presently joining. So welcome. I'm Leslie Kaplan. Our Monday Motivation Spotlight meets weekly and our professional women's networking forum meets monthly. So we have a fabulous session lined up for you today. I'm going to introduce her in just a moment. Firstly, I would just like to tell you how we work with the Professional Women's Networking Forum. This is officially a networking forum as opposed to the other one where you write your details in the chat. So here we are going to be having two sets of breakout rooms and we'll be able to share. We'll introduce a little bit later what the breakout rooms are all about. And feel free throughout the event, if you have any questions for our special speaker, Heather Dean, feel free to ask her any questions in the chat. If we do have time afterwards, then Heather will answer them. She won't be answering questions throughout the actual presentation. And you are also free to contact her afterwards. We'll give her details where you can be in touch with her if you do have any other questions. So sit back, make sure you have not only a pen and paper with you, but also a good cup of coffee, tea, water, whatever it is, especially for those of you that joined us from earlier on. And I'm going to officially introduce our special guest, Heather. Let me add you as a spotlight. Heather, you may just want to unmute yourself as I see you are still muted. Okay. So good morning, Heather. We're going to be running through till 11 a.m. So make sure that you stay with us until the very end. Heather is very well known in Jerusalem circles. In fact, she was also a former guest of ours and of mine at the professional women's when we were still meeting pre-COVID days in Talpiot, if you remember that, Heather. And I've had the privilege of meeting up with her since. Heather, as you all know, or many of you know, is a sought-after public speaker. She's an author. She's a media interview consultant. She's a podcast host. She's been, for over 14 years before she made Aliyah, she was very well known as an interviewer, interviewing hundreds of celebrities on MTV, E! Entertainment TV, Associated Press. And then she decided, which I'm sure, I don't know if you're going to share it with us this time, but certainly her book shares it with, with, with the, her story, uh, Heather's book, which was titled Searching for Heather Dean, where she shares her story, how she decided to leave everything that she had in the States, her fabulous glitzy career life, to then start her glitzy career life in Israel, which she probably didn't know at the time, which, and she uses the words to discover her authentically Jewish life in Israel. So Heather, Am Israel is all the better for having you around. Eris Israel is all the better for having you around. So welcome, and we look forward to a wonderful session sharing with us how we can basically get media coverage without paying for advertising and anything else that you would like to add. So take it away, the floor is yours. Thank you so much, Leslie. It's wonderful to see everybody. I see people that are signing in. It's a very hush of a crowd. Um, so I'm really happy that everyone is joining us today. Uh, my name is Heather Dean. I have a great deal of information to impart. So you will probably see me often referring to my notes. And I therefore invite you to also have, grab pen and paper because there is a lot of information that I'll be giving out as to how we can earn free media coverage, I called it earned media coverage, without paying for ads. Uh, I want to thank you, Leslie, so much and AACI for inviting me to share with you the expertise that I've gained thus far in my career. And I also want to thank my podcast announcer, Michael Doniger. I am talking to you today from his broadcasting booth, his audio booth, um, which is why I sound pretty good. <laughs> but I also wanted to make sure because we are being recorded that the sound is good. The lighting, as you can see, is not great, but that's because this is an audio booth and that's fine. That's a nice thing of when you get to a certain age, you worry less and less about your looks and more about the content of your character. Uh, so I will be referring to my notes, as I said, uh, a great deal, just so that I can make sure that I get all this information to you. Um, one of the things that I've that I noticed when when I would promote my own uh, endeavors, including my book, including other projects that I've on, I've always tried to avoid, and I've done a pretty good job of it, avoiding paying for ads because there is so much we can do with earned media. And for all of us that are entrepreneurs or work for a, a, someone else's business, 
there are so many expenses, as you know. I don't need to list them for you, but I'm going to do that anyway uh, because it figures into our return on investment. And so this is a thing that my clients come to me with such frustration is they've already, you know, it's just the time factor alone that they've invested in their product or service or their written work, the time factor, research that they've done, consultants and advisors that, that they've hired, and also, the, if you run a shop of any kind, or if you are a coach, there's a lot of there are a lot of supplies that you've invested in, uh, inventory, software, travel expenses, and that includes commuting. Um, you might have somebody that's on your team, like an administrative assistant, and even if you don't, you probably have an accountant or a lawyer, or uh, and you should, <laughs> um, and just people that are working for you. So what do I do? I, as Leslie said, I am an author, a podcaster. I am host of the podcast called 613 Books, 613, 613 Books. And that's a podcast that has been, it's almost a year old. And I interview every week different authors, a variety of authors who've written a variety of books. All of them have authentic Torah values. One of uh, our esteemed uh, participants was a guest of mine, Toby Klein Greenwald, who I adore. She did a very special, um, special episode with us uh, pre before Tisha B'Av. So she had some great reading material that I got feedback on. That was a uh, great reading material that is specific to Av Tisha B'Av. So everybody has something to offer, and uh, so six thirteen books fills a niche for people who have written work, who have published a uh, book yet have don't, don't really have a place to go to. So this is like a Torah book, a, a Torah-centered book podcast. Um, I'm also a media strategist and media interview consultant. So for people that aren't so polished when it comes to conducting media interviews or being a guest with, uh, thank you, Toby, for your endorsement, <laughs> uh, for being a guest on podcasts. So I help them with their interviews, whichever side of the microphone they're on. I have been conducting interviews since, if you can believe it, the late 80s when I had a college radio show. So this is uh, something I call many decades. By the way, I was in college when I was three. That's That accounts for like why I started in the 1980s. Uh, um, so, but it's a very long career of doing media interviews. And also I'm a media strategist. So I help uh, people who are, who have some sort of product service or written work and they want to earn media coverage for the for the work for the work that they've put out uh, at the moment I'm actually working on a feature film uh, somebody who read my book a film producer reached out to me they're based in the United States and so I am handling uh, the media strategy for them and it's really super exciting because all of the skills that I picked up back in the day when I worked at MTV I worked on a movie preview show called the big picture so all those skills that I picked up about how media studios how movie studios do it right I'm able to apply that to uh, the feature film that I'm working on right now as a media strategist um, I've been a producer of celebrity interviews from the days that I worked at MTV and as Leslie said E Entertainment Television AP Radio many international publications uh, are, have published interviews that I've done um, in that work when I was working in broadcasting in the States and publishing so I received pitch letters every month do we know what a pitch letter is out there I'll, I'll, I'll describe it to you but I received pitch letters from publicists and studios and Broadway um, productions that they wanted to seek cover they were seeking coverage for their clients movie or their musicians record album television show Broadway I was getting pitched all the time hey we'd like to appear on your show the show you produced at MTV or um, e whatever it was uh, I would get pitched constantly so I've seen how the pros know how to pitch and it's very polished and it's always a winning formula um, as a podcaster so I see how the not people who are so professional do pitch and and I've learned from other people that are media producers and including myself uh, what sort of pitches usually are deleted I don't delete I usually respond why something may not be a great fit for the show that I that I produce but sometimes often journalists will just hit the delete button because they are constantly on deadlines and they just uh, are not going to do a lot of the legwork for 
um, entrepreneurs who just send them like, hey, I'd like to appear on your show or I'd like you to write me up. Uh, here's my website. Like, no, yeah, <laughs> you have to you have to do some of the legwork for the journalist and pitch to them why you're a good fit for the uh, for the outlet that they work with or for their own show. OK, so I'm all about earned media, but I do want to talk about and this is probably the first of the notes that you should take if you haven't uh, begun taking, because we're going to talk briefly about and we're going to define what is earned media, what is owned media, and what is paid media. Okay, so again, I make no secret about being a proponent of earned media. So paid media is anything that you pay for, right? So you might sponsor an ad in a magazine, you might sponsor an ad on social media. You might pay for an influencer to walk around with your book. This happens all the time. If you see a, a, a photograph of Britney Spears walking around with a book, believe me, she may or may not be reading that book, but she has been paid to walk around with that book. In the 1980s, uh, I remember it was a big deal that I think it was Honda, some big car maker they sent for free. They gave Cindy Crawford, the model, a car because they wanted her to ju just be seen driving around in this car. So <clears throat> there are there's a whole spectrum of paid media, and that includes paying influencers to show your product in their daily life. Then there is owned media. So media that is owned, that's something that you own. So it might be your website. It might be um, including a blog on your website. Blogs, uh, if marketed correctly, marketed well, they can also have a following of their own, uh, especially Substack, um, which is a great platform for people that love to write and love to blog. Uh, another media that we all own uh, probably is social media. So posts from your account, though that's media that you own. Uh, you might, uh, your product or service, you might have a newsletter. That's also media that you own. So owned media, the nice thing about that is that is something that you've created. You have your distribution tr channels that you control. That's owned media. Um, before we get into earned media, let's just take a minute with your pen and paper, list just some of your current owned media. All right. So all the things that you already own as your media, list that. And then maybe including your list, one thing, one thing that you can do today to make even a slight improvement with one of the media that you own. Hmm. Okay. If anyone wants to share in the chat, I'm going to move on, but if someone wants to share in the chat, uh, just so that you have a little bit of accountability, something that you can do today, one thing to make even a slight improvement in the media that you own. You can put that in the chat and uh, God willing, I'd love to see it later when I have a moment. We are going to move on to earned media. Okay, so earned media is coverage for your brand, your product, your service, your written work that comes through organic means. So one of the things I love about earned media is that it's free. It is free. I think one of the things that it may cost is a bit of your time, but it is free. It will not appear on your ledger because it's media. I mean, most likely it's really hard to make dollars and cents and shekels out of media that you earned. Um, but the nice thing is you're not paying for ads. Earned media is also more credible. We've all seen ads that are paid for in our social media feed, and that's fine. But when you see that it was a paid for ad, that is you know, we have what our we have our opinions about that, and it's all good. It's just that we also know that that was a paid for ad. It's not necessarily an endorsement that the advertiser got through not having to pay for that ad. And it's just that even a well produced ad won't match the credibility of an unpaid ad. Think of books that you've read because they were they were reviewed. That's an that's something that the book book author probably didn't pay for, just the shipping of the book to the book reviewer. But 
the, the nice thing about having a book reviewed or any sort of um, any sort of earned media is that the book review the book author gets loyal readers or the person who's a professional gets customers and clients because the media professional has either done an interview or some sort of book review, product review, endorsement, and that's a lot of credibility. And I'll give you a real world example of how something I just happened to mention landed on the Oprah Winfrey show without my calling up the staff at Oprah. Um, when <laughs> when it was the 1990s, I read a best-selling book. Uh, it was actually, so I used to be friends with them. Um, someone who's now so super famous. We've not been in touch in a long time, but uh, back in the 1980s and 90s, so I was, uh, I was very good friends with Edie Falco, who a lot of you know as Carmela Soprano. So Edie and I used to go to movie screenings together. I would get these free movie screening passes. And I still remember we, uh, we were at the screening of a Robert Redford Michelle Pfeiffer movie, which was based loosely on the life of Jessica Savage, the journalist. Um, I don't, the movie was very forgettable, so I even forget the title. But I remember it was what, when we were waiting for the movie screening to start. So Edie had asked me if I ever read this new book called The Rules. And I'm like, no, I have no idea what it is. So The, the Rules is um, written by two uh, Jewish uh, authors who basically it's advice on um, getting married and old uh, traditional principles for women who are marriage minded. And the time Edie and I were both single. And it's just uh, these rules. It was a very, very controversial book. But that night I went to, on my way home from the screening, I went to Barnes and Noble, picked up the book, read it in two days, and it transformed my dating life. And I should say for the better. So I was all enthusiastic about the rules. I started telling friends of mine. At the time I was working with the E Channel and I would produce celebrity news segments with all kinds of top uh, magazine editors. I would go to their offices and produce whatever celebrity news that they had that they were going to give to this uh, E! program that we were working for called The Gossip Show. So, um, so I remember just glowing about uh, this book, The Rules, and to everybody, including the editor-in-chief of Fitness Magazine, Sally Lee. So I was telling her about this, and she decided the next staff meeting she was going to assign one of her reporters to do a book on excuse me, to do a, a magazine article on the rules. And I was interviewed for it anonymously. And people that I knew who read the book, they were interviewed. A bunch of people were interviewed about this book. Fine. It appears in Fitness Magazine. Uh, that issue came out and it uh, was widely read, including by one of Oprah's producers who just had the magazine propped up on her treadmill at the gym, started reading it. And she brought that idea to an Oprah show staff meeting and within a very short amount of time. So the co-authors of the rules were invited on the Oprah show. Um, by that point, I, I was in touch with the authors of the rules because I told them this is how it happened, how you landed this great gig on Oprah. And that book became a giant, giant bestseller. So one never knows how earned media will, what it, what the nth degree it'll take you, take you to, but obviously a word of mouth like that, that ends up on Oprah. So that was a very big deal, a very red letter day for those authors. Um, it's, so this is an example of how earned media can create a very positive spiral. You just need people to champion what you do, and there you go. You're off and running, uh, God willing. Um, earned, earned media also provides you with some social capital, and that means, let's say that you are an author, so it means new, read new readers. Or if you are somebody who does other kinds of business that people do these recommendations. So it just leads to more customers, more people who will buy your product or service. So social capital is always good. Um, social people who are social, that's the whole idea behind word of mouth. A journalist or a media host or a columnist who has a following, if they praise your work, so that will also lead to new clients. Um, I mentioned before that I worked on a movie preview show uh, for MTV, so it was called The Big Picture. And 
this is this was a show where movie studios uh, would send us their materials. Uh, we would know when movies were being released. There's a company that all they do, it's called Exhibitor Relations. All they do is list when studios, like what the schedule is for when studios release their movies. Exhibitor Relations also is a statistical service. So for the movie studios, it provides statistical information as to how your movie did at the box office. Anyway, so at MTV, um, one of my jobs as the associate producer for this show was to always be in touch with exhibitor relations and get updates on when movies are being released. So the movie studios is just this whole marketing machine. And that means they're contacting not only me at MTV back in the day, but all of the radio stations and all of the television uh, network shows and local shows. <clears throat> they had a whole machine going. So this is so this is uh, this type of a show and other newscasts and other shows for a media for a movie studio that in a way is free advertising. They're not pay that's not that's where they're not paying for ads of their movies to run on TV, but they're actually uh, so a show like The Big Picture at MTV that was like free commercials every week for the movie studios for movies that would appeal to the under 30 crowd, the uh, MTV crowd. So that was a very smart marketing tool for all, including MTV. And uh, Leslie, with your permission, I'd like to give a topic for the first breakout session. And if I understand, um, the the breakout session also includes one's elevator pitch. Is that correct? I'll give you right. a question. Absolutely, absolutely. The rooms are all open, ready to go. I was just waiting okay. for the queue for you. So okay. ladies, I'd like to remind you what we do. Heather, I'll just say in terms of the elevator pitch is... For this part now, if you can please open up your cameras and we're going to be divided into groups for 10 minutes, then we're going to come back into the floor and uh, Heather is going to be sharing more and lots more information with us. And we'll have a second breakout group a little bit later uh, in our session. So yes, we're going to be doing our elevator pitch, which means that you share with everyone in the group what you do, 30 to 60 seconds. If one person can please take charge of the group to make sure that everyone is speaking and that, that there's no one person that's uh, you know monopolizing the group. And Heather, in addition to the elevator pitch, if you'd like to explain what people are gonna do in this group for 10 minutes. Great, great. So this is an easy one and kind of fun, I think. Um, I'd like you to think of, or perhaps just write down, two examples where you've already earned good media coverage for anything you've done professionally. And if you are new to this profession or for whatever reason you can't think of professionally a couple of examples where you've earned good positive media coverage, just think of something maybe personally where you've earned good media coverage. Okay, excellent. So I'm going to be opening up the rooms now. As I say, we're going to be running for 10 minutes. So please make sure you take advantage and talk about the topic too. I remind you also that I do not record the breakout rooms. In fact, I'm stopping the recording now for those of you that are watching this recording. Right, we're back from the breakout rooms. And before we get started with our next session, there are just a couple of announcements, quick announcements that I would like to make. Firstly, for those of you that were in the first part, I'd like to welcome you. Next week, we have our Monday Motivation Spotlight with a very special guest, Barbara Sofa in lieu of International Women's Day, who she is the Israel Director for Public Relations for Hadassah Women's Zionist Organization. 30 minutes, 9 to 9.30 a.m. next week, Monday morning. You're welcome to even be off camera for that. And I invite you to join us. If not, you can watch the recording. It will be on YouTube. And I invite you all to follow and like my YouTube channel, my Spotify, where you won't miss out on any episodes. Then to say this date, this is the first time we're being, uh, we're announcing this right now. I haven't actually advertised this at all. Our next monthly professional women's forum, which we're in right now, is March 18th in the morning, 9.30 to 11. You can see it in front of you, integrating wellness strategies with three wonderful guests. So please make sure that you save that date and it also will have breakout rooms. And I'd like to also invite you to read my, my book, a brand new book on small business success toolbox and guide. It has over 25 checklists. So it's not just theory, it's lots of practical elements to develop and advance your business. It's available as an ebook as well as on uh, as a paperback. 
If you have Kindle Unlimited, then you can get it for free. And even as a paperback, if you order $49 uh, worth, that is what uh, Amazon has said, that you can get free shipping. I will be bringing in copies into Israel too. So if any of you would like a copy, feel free to message me personally or just write Israel in the chat. And then I'll know to reserve a copy for you once it arrives in Israel that you don't have to worry about international shipping. All right, we're back now with our special guest, Heather Dean, and we're going to be continuing. So Heather, take it away. Let's continue and we'll be having another set of breakout rooms a little bit later. Thank you. It's been so much fun so far. I was in a breakout room, which um, I was taken out from mid-sentence, Toby. So uh, thank you for what you're about to say. <clears throat> but I'm back here with you, everybody. And for people who are just joining us, <clears throat> uh, my name is Heather Dean, and I help businesses and um, entrepreneurs and authors earn free media coverage for their product service or written work. And I'm also a media interview coach. And uh, one of the things that I'm working on now as a media strategist, as I mentioned at the top of the program, is right now I'm working on a feature film. So that keeps me very busy as uh, their media strategist. Um, it's a film that was, is based in the United States. So you will probably be hearing more about that closer to Pesach when it's released, God willing. Um, and the, also for people that are just joining us. So even though I am a media professional, it's sort of like, what's the deal with that lady's background? So I'm talking to you from the booth of my podcast's announcer, Michael Doniger, who I thank for allowing me to sound better than I normally do. <laughs> okay, so... Let's get back to earned media promotion. So this is a, a a secret that all journalists know that not many business owners know, and that's that you uh, who are pitching media for coverage, it's really not up to you when coverage takes place. So anybody who is a journalist, and there are people here who work in the media that are part of this session, so you know that when you get pitches, some of your pitches are um, from people who assume they're going to be written up for your publication or assume that they're going to appear on your program. And the truth is that you don't really... You're not the one in charge of that. You're not the one making the schedule for the journalist. And usually things are approved by a news editor or the host themselves or a producer. So just have in mind that media relations is a fine dance. You have to watch, walk and do your best to be friendly and kind with the media people that you pitch. And and so we'll get more into pitching media people, but it's one of those things about earned media is that it's really not in our control, but what we can control is our messaging and other factors that we're going to get into. So one of the building blocks, we're going to be talking about a couple of building blocks for earned media. And for people that work in the media, you know it as that no like, and trust factors. The three things, no, K-N-O-W, the like factor and the trust factor. So in order for people to get to know you, and this is something that I learned when my own memoir was in its manuscript stage. So for those of you who know the great Paula Stern, she and I once had lunch at a networking um day-long work, uh, workshop seminar. And she had said, because <laughs> I, I was really adverse to social media, I'm introverted and not necessarily looking to expand my social uh, circle. It's big enough for me. But she had said, but when you release your book, people aren't going to know you. you can't just expect readers to come and flock and buy your book as good as it might be. So it was with Paula's inspiration, I thought, okay, maybe I need to just take the big step and start allowing people to get to know what I do and who I am. So one of the things you want to do when you're establishing, and many of you have already established, that like that, excuse me, the no factor, K-N-O-W, is your reputation. All right. So this is where you allow people to know about your credibility, meaning what are your credentials, what's your experience. This allows for people to trust who you are. So there are people uh, on this forum right now who um, who already have that advantage of a, pos a position of trust. They exude authority. They are thought leaders. 
and especially being an authority in your niche. And when you, when you are considered an authority in your niche, that's because you, you know how to establish and to demonstrate your expertise. So this is one of those key factors for people knowing who you are is because you already have a reputation for doing very good things. Let's get into the like factor. So a like factor is uh, people who like us, they, they, they know who we are and how can you not like who we are, right? So it could be people who carry some influence, they know who you are. Um, people who are bloggers, if you, if you um, comment on other people's blogs or you have a blog, so bloggers know how to build a network or they learn on the job how to build a network. But it is one of those important factors of who you know. If blogging works for what you do, for promoting your product, service, or written work, if blogging works for what you do, that's also a great way for people to get to know you. And I mentioned earlier, Substack is a great forum for people who love to write, and it's another way of getting for people to get to know you and like you. Um, I gave a couple of examples of word of mouth. That's also a factor of who you know. So word of mouth uh, is... We're, we are all social people, and so we all love recommendations from one another. So on my own podcast, 613 Books, where I mentioned before, I interview a variety of authors who um, who their book has authentic Torah values, right? So when you have a books podcast, we have a special segment that's just called uh, the, What's on My Reading Table, because Everyone who loves books is always asking people, read any good books lately? So that's just one example of that no factor and word of mouth. Another nice word of mouth is social media shout outs. So um, when we post on, when we post nice comments on each other's social media and give a shout out, it's really, really appreciated because you know why? I hear it from entrepreneurs who I know and Every people have good days and they have not so good days, and you never know when a shout out is going to make an entrepreneur's day. I've heard it from entrepreneurs, I've heard it from their spouses that something positive that I say on social media and it always comes from the heart, I don't fake some sort of like uh, you know, nice comment, it, it always comes from the heart. And it does mean a lot to entrepreneurs. And that only is that kind of spreading of goodwill adds to the who you know factor. Um, okay. And then trust, uh, which is the third building block in this little set of no like, and trust. So trust has to do with your community. Um, when you are part of a community, when and when you are a facilitator of a community, that adds a lot to your trust factor. So this is one of those forums, which is a community building forum, the AACI Leslie Kaplan's Business Entrepreneur Forum for Women, which is not the official title. I'm getting the title wrong. But community building adds to that trust as we get to know each other and get to know each other's work. Um, there, another great community is Natalie Garson's community, Jewish Women Entrepreneurs. That's also, a, 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 she provides many um, outlets for people to get to know what each other does. And therefore, it could lead to community building. It could lead to tr uh, that trust factor. Um, some of us are affiliated with Temech, which is an organization, a network for religious women in business, all levels of religious observance. And that's something that Gavira Milworm heads up, Temech. Um, the great Debbie Sasson. So she does a Jewish entrepreneur podcast. She has been um, growing, growing her brand by extending it to all Jewish entrepreneurs. It used to be for, she used to specialize in for women after 50 who are entrepreneurs, but now she's uh, expanded and opened it up. She has a great reputation and she is a community builder as well. Um, the great Jody Samuels, who I think is participating this morning. If you want to talk about community, Jody is a master at uh, networking and connecting people and does it on an international scale. And I'm <laughs> she's one of those people I'm trying to find out how do we nominate Jody Samuels 
if anyone has any ideas to to get, you know, the awards that they do um, on Yom Hatzma'ud for people who do, do great things for Israel and Jewish people. So uh, Jody Samuels is among the people I would like to nominate for that. And I just don't know how uh, I've even. <laughs> so, Jody, you don't know that, but. Uh, uh, yeah, I think our they're... friend Jody doesn't get to sleep at night time. She's no. so busy. Well, but that's by choice. Jody. We've spoken uh, about that. Uh, so Jody, not... Yeah. So. Um, uh, so there are many people on this forum who do great things for Israel, great things for the Jewish people. And so this is all about community building, which you can't get enough of. Uh, another factor, another aspect of the no like trust factor is just engagement, as I mentioned before. And that means engaging with other people's social media, engaging with other people's services. Um, there, a way that you can also engage the community at large is to work with charities, work with nonprofits. You might be able to figure some sort of tie in with what you do and then tie it into, um, even if it doesn't, well, if it promotes your business, great, but, uh, it's, it's sort of like, um, what Kim has been doing so generously this month and next by tying in what she does as a, an entrepreneur to help boost this forum, which also boosts other entrepreneurs. Okay, so let's get into some examples of earned media. Um, the earned media, when you are reaching out to the media, as I mentioned before, so we don't control what other journalists do or publish or broadcast, but we can do our best to get there, to at least, get, so even if you don't, get a yes right away. One of uh, It's already a big accomplishment if you are at least considered by somebody who is a media host or producer. I uh, just need to take a swig of water. So, so one of the things I advocate so strongly when you're reaching out to the media is that you must have some sort of specific tailor-made pitch to your contact. So press releases are fine. I'll be getting into press releases in a little bit, but there has to be also the personal touch. For anyone here who is a published author or wants to be an author, so uh, there used to be this juke in our heads that we used to think before before there was desktop publishing was you have to glom onto one of the big six, now it's five, publishing houses based in New York, like Simon Schuster, uh, Random House before they merged with another company. Um, uh, uh, there are there are six of them, <laughs> so I'm not going to list all six just at the moment. But it used to be that the only way to break through one of these, to get into one of these companies, would be through a literary agent. And literary agents, there's a certain format where you have to follow when you reach out to literary agents, but they will not even consider you if there isn't some sort of personal touch. So it also happens in the media that they that when you pitch, add something that's also a personal touch. Um, in, and who do we pitch when we talk about pitching the media? So one thing that helps, first of all, to have in your back pocket are reviews. So with, uh, big and small businesses, uh, people know about Yelp, Yelp reviews. There's a little bit of controversy as far as like fake reviews, but if there is a forum, a platform where you can get positive reviews, uh, it could be something in a social media group where you might ask for and get recommendations. People who are on LinkedIn are constantly uh, very pleased when somebody uh, surprises them with a nice recommendation. Or just go ahead and ask someone, would you please recommend uh, me and what I do on my LinkedIn? There might be bloggers who love what you do. So these are nice things to have in your back pocket. Um, when we talk about also pitching the media, so there's there's different kinds out there. There, my specialty is traditional media. There are so many awesome social media uh, experts. So sometimes I will also direct uh, my clients to certain people who are social media experts. But my uh, strength is traditional media. So that includes radio, includes podcasts, includes television, magazines, all kinds of publications, newspapers. That's traditional media. And, you know, it's nice when if if you do have some or any contacts that are in traditional media. So it's nice to 
continue to nurture that relationship. You don't have to bonk someone over the head with uh, and pester them. But if they have some sort of blog that you engage with, or if they have social media, it's nice to engage. It's nice to share uh, what they do. It's appreciated. And I mentioned before about word of mouth. So, Leslie, I think we're at that time. We can probably do another uh, breakout uh, if you're interested. Yep, excellent. Okay. okay, so ladies, we're going to be opening up now the other set of breakout rooms. Would you like to just inform everyone, Heather, what you'd like them to discuss this time? Yes, yes. Okay, so now that we're getting our juices flowing and thinking about reaching out to media, uh, I'd like for everybody to think of or at least write down around five or more journalists, bloggers, media outlets, where you would like to earn coverage for your product or your service or your written work. Try to think about five at least, and then discuss in your group if maybe other people would recommend additional media platforms to consider outreach. And with this, I need to give a big, big, big important message. It's very, very important and good manners if someone in your breakout room reveals that they know people at any number of outlets. Do not pr put this person on the spot today, uh, during this forum anyway. D don't put them on the spot, probably ever, just to ask for a journalist contact information, It just because it can be awkward, especially if this person in your breakout, maybe they just don't know you, they don't know your work. So if they reach out to you and recommend that you contact their media friend, that's fantastic. Right, okay. That is very, very important information. I'm now pausing the recording. All right, so we are back from the breakout rooms and we're going to be continuing now with Heather, who is giving us some great information. I hope you enjoyed the breakout rooms. I hope you found them productive. If you can please put yourself on mute now. You were on unmute before. I am sounding on um, mute right now, so that's interesting. All right, Heather, oh, let me find you in this gallery, and I'm going to now spotlight you. Okay, we're looking forward to hearing another 15, 20 minutes, let's say 15, 18 minutes of a summary, and then I'll just sum up everything. So go for it. Take it away. Thank you. Okay, so we've spoken about uh, earning media coverage. And so after the session wraps up, just continue to cultivate your list of media outlets, uh, people that you would like to connect with and earn coverage. And as, as I said, network today with people on this, uh, on this particular workshop where you can offer leads and offer ideas and offer future collaboration. And for people that are just joining us, so uh, I am a media strategist and media interview advisor, and I help people who want to earn media coverage for their product, service, and written work, Heather Dean. And my website is heatherdeanproductions.com. So feel free to contact me through the contact form on the website, and I would uh, be happy to follow up with you, time permitting. I am working on a feature film, so that's I'm in the middle of a giant uh, media campaign with them. So again, be uh, please be patient, and I'll get back to you as, uh, as, as soon as I come up for air from that. Uh, for So in the time remaining, so part of the billing of this particular workshop is also about reaching out to journalists, pitching journalists for media coverage. There's so much I have to say on this topic, pages and pages. So I'm just going to bullet point through some of the points that uh, you may want to keep in mind that will be necessary when it comes to pitching journalists and other people who make decisions what goes on to their media platforms. So we're going to do a three-pronged approach. We're going to do three main topics when it comes to pitching yourself to journalists, hosts, and producers. So topic number one I'm going to talk about is how to think like a journalist, how to think like a journalist. The second topic I'm going to talk about is how is, is about the importance of writing your default uh, media pitch, which is your template media pitch. And also I'd like to talk about Topic three, sending and following up on your pitch. So I will get to as much of the nitty gritty as possible, time permitting. When it comes to thinking like a journalist, I spoke a little bit about this, um, but what you need to know about the mind of a journalist is they do want to reach the widest audience possible. It's sort of like someone who's a musician. So musicians don't want to just be Phoebe Buffay who plays in the local coffee shop, if you know what I mean from Friends. 
a musician's aspiration is to play to a stadium crowd, a big auditorium and eventually a stadium, right? That would be the, the, that would be the ultimate dream. A journalist also, maybe they don't reach stadiums full of people, but they do want to get a wide audience because they are putting their guts into what they're writing about or speaking about. And so they want people to read or to listen to what they have to say. There are six elements to pitching journalists. So this is a subcategory. These are the things, there's many, but these are the things that intrigue journalists. And even, so again, we're trying to at least get our product, service, or written work considered, right? Because I can't and no journalist can promise you a yes, but wouldn't you love to at least be considered by a journalist, which hopefully will lead to a yes, hopefully. So the six elements that I want to talk about include timeliness, Timeliness include impact. So we have timeliness and impact. Prominence. We have timeliness, impact, and prominence. Proximity. Timeliness, impact, prom prominence, and proximity. Conflict, believe it or not. So we have timeliness, impact, prominence, proximity, conflict. And the last of the six I'll be uh, skimming over will be human interest. All right, so timeliness, impact, prominence, proximity, conflict, and human interest. Let's talk real quickly about timeliness, right? When you think of journalists, they are constantly on deadlines. So, but what sticks out for them when they are on a deadline? If they see that there is a topic you're pitching that is trending, if it is relevant of the moment, I was in a breakout room where there's a filmmaker who is who is filming things that are very relevant of the moment that have to do with uh, scenes around Israel and um, and matters that have to do with where what's going on in Israel and the environment today. So trending, relevant, maybe you have something that sheds new light on what everyone's already talking about. So what you want to do when you pitch the media is you want to show a journalist why your story is timely through examples rather than just tell them what the topic is and expect them to take you at your word you, you want to explain to them why their information matters so uh, a handy thing that we have at our advantage is the jewish calendar right so there's always something timely to come up so it could be that you have something that uh, unfortunately we're at a war but people who who consume media, they are interested in something that has to do with the war, with family life, with work life. Uh, so there are timely topics you might be, if it's relevant to your product or service, that have to do with that. We have Purim coming up. So, for example, if somebody is a, um, uh, is a chef or owns a restaurant or something, there might be, uh, it could be that your menu offers uh, gluten-free. Uh, so is there, people are planning their Purim Seuda. It could be from your restaurant, there's certain recipes that are gluten-free or can be modified to gluten-free. Um, let's talk about impact. So will your story impact a large number of people? So that's something that will pique a journalist's interest because, again, as I said, they want to reach a wide audience. They want to reach a wide readership. So that is something that would that would uh, that would uh, prick their ears, get their attention. Um, so it, the the journalist, whoever, whatever their outlet is, they will wonder subconsciously if what you're pitching will it greatly affect an industry that's relevant to their readers. So if it's a journalist that uh, writes for an education related outlet, so they they will subconsciously wonder, not wonder, is this going to be something that's relevant to the people who read my particular journal? Uh, what might be helpful, uh, depending on different journals and podcasts and television shows and magazines, is if you can give them statistics that are relevant and useful in conveying a certain impact. So it could be, let's say that um, you are somebody who writes for a publication that has to do with dentistry. So dentists, anything in the technical, the STEM sciences, they love statistics. And it could be that a recent survey about children's dental health reveals this or that. Right. Um, for people like me that grew up in the 70s, remember we the the Trident commercials, it really sold well to this day. People from America know what four out of five dentists surveyed. We know what the result is. You're probably saying it to yourself, what four out of five dentists recommend for people who chew gum. 
Um, okay, let's get into prominence. So is uh, is the thing that you're pitching, is your product or service, is your written work, is it about a widely known subject? Maybe there's a celebrity or a public figure who you can tie into this subject. And it doesn't mean a celebrity that you are pitching on behalf of it, but it could be, for example, a lot of people um, when it came to <laughs> this happens all over the place what, for people that they are experts in relationships. Maybe they are relationship coaches. So there. So on standard news feeds, you know, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey are all the rage. If you're listening to this on the recording, it could be in a few months' time. It will. They will not be all the rage because who knows where the relationship is headed. But something that has to do with uh, so again relationships. Uh, you don't have to tie it into Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, but just the idea of attaching a public figure. So it could be telltale signs that he's going to pop the question, right? Um, and other things, again, you can tailor your pitch, uh, pun intended, pun not intended, uh, to to what it is that you are pitching. Um, but it could also be that uh, if if something that's relevant, like some sort of a government organization, a beloved nat uh, nature park, um, this is also, you should know, uh, from my former uh, niche, the entertainment business, this is award season. So I don't really follow the award season like I used to. In fact, uh, when I wake up, I'll see on a, like NBC News website how, something that came down at the SAG After Awards, which just happened. So again, if you're in entertainment, you know what SAG After is and why that award is important. Uh, at the end of March is usually when the Oscars come up. So again, this is award season. And it could also be that uh, if your topic has to do, if if you are a social worker, you, your topic with that you're pitching the the media might have to do with the um, the importance like of the connection between awards and our self esteem, and then you know you can tie it to a specific award that is coming up maybe. Um, but there are other things you can brainstorm with yourself and think about what is going on that's widely known, widely understood, and work a little bit of prominence into your pitch. Another thing that intrigues journalists is something to do with proximity, something that hits close to home. So if there's a, an item that you can pitch connected to what you do that feels a bit more intense or immediate, something that happens close by. So this is why proximity has a news value of its own. So most of us here on this uh, forum are based in Israel. So it's kind of unfortunately a no-brainer why certain uh, stories uh, are, that are intense, that are immediate, will um, will at least get you to a stage where the journalist considers, yes, uh, maybe this is a story that we're going to go forward with. But it also could be that just something not geographical is still uh, a very trending topic, something that does hit close to home and uh, and is uh, is about proximity. So uh, Kim Bash, the fantastic speaker who was uh, on earlier this morning, so that, that alone is a topic of Aliyah. People who never thought about making Aliyah to Israel are starting to at least think about it. It might be in their subconscious or other people in the family, it's in their full conscious and front burner issues. And uh, that may be something that uh, as long as your family might be considering Aliyah or if if whatever the case is, if there's a pain point or some sort of objective objection that they have toward it. So uh, the right kind of news story, the right kind of pitch uh, for a story for a journalist might be something that uh, at least gets some good consideration. Um, a lot of people here are connected to their hometown, maybe uh, in some way, or they're connected to their current community where they live in, maybe where you live is your hometown. But proc this is where proximity f figures into it. So um, we're talking about local, community, regional outlets. One thing that if you are if you are promoting a product, service, or written work that I urge you to do is pitch your hometown radio, TV, and newspapers. So recently, um, the great Aliza Ben Shalom from the Netflix series Jewish Matchmaking, so she was recently fe featured as the cover story for uh, one of the newspapers in Philadelphia for their weekend magazine. So she's often a cover story everywhere, but... Um, 
uh, in my own example. So I'm originally from Cleveland, as some of you know. So when my memoir came out, uh, I asked the marketing team who was working with me to pitch every major Jewish community uh, media uh, outlets and or like the, the Jewish media outlets. But it was Cleveland that was the most successful uh, one to reach out to because that's where I'm from. Um, one of the journalists actually worked at the time for the Cleveland Jewish News, so that was an easy way to get consideration from her editor. And so the the, the Cleveland Jewish News, they did a really nice write-up on my book when it was published. And then at the end of that year, um, my book was on their top 10 list of books that were published in the Jewish market. And I think that was because I'm from Cleveland, because there are other cities where their local Jewish newspapers also do uh, top top reads for the year. And uh, but th this is the one that I know about because it was sent to me. Um, I also mentioned in one of the uh, elements of intrigue for journalists is the element of conflict. So that's where if there is something associated with your product or service or written work that has some sort of drama, um, uh, journalists, uh, for whatever it is, they they do want that there is some sort of conflict. It's sort of like um, what, popular movies and TV shows. There's usually some sort of conflict. It's not just every everyone's going merrily along their way, and it's and it's a grand day every day. Uh, even on Teletubbies, probably there's just some sort of conflict. So you know, we're talking about pain points, but we're also talking about um, navigating some sort of recent development and um so with with conflict it's sort of like is that how it, with this story how far is it moving to being resolved and dealt with and uh, the last of these uh, points of intrigue is the human interest uh, aspect to pitching your story and so um when you want in wanting to reach a larger audience and making using that human interest angle. So one of the people that's part of the forum uh, is she she deals with adult children who want to look after their parents. There are coaches who deal with the sandwich generation. So that may be somebody who's looking after their elderly parents, but meanwhile, there are youngsters living at home. So when you are pitching the media, if one of your clients is also willing to go on record and talk about in, in your particular niche how your services help them, great. But you don't even need to necessarily go to a client when, again, when you are pitching your story. So if you have something written up and it's somebody that maybe they're not a client, but still somebody that you that you know that your product or service helped resolve something that they did, it's it's nice to use that in the opening of your pitch. It's sort of like if you think about an, an article, whether it's in the Wall Street Journal or anywhere, usually articles that are of human interest, it starts with a personal angle and then it goes on to bring in experts and to bring in uh, statistics. Uh, let's say that you are a personal chef. So if you are doing some sort of a pitch, you might have a client or someone else that you know who has a dietary restriction. So when pitching the media to cover you, you might ha include, how, you know, walk us through who that is and how your services or your advice uh, has helped them overcome that or, or deal with, manage that dietary restriction. Um, if you are a personal organizer, so either maybe there's a client or, again, somebody that you know that you uh, know how to help them overcome that, and you lay that out and then get into statistics about personal organization and uh, or the upcoming holiday, we're all going to be getting organized for Purim and then and then Pesach. So there, so there are personal organizers and kitchen coaches out there who are helping people get organized for Pesach. So this is a fantastic way to pitch the media because it is definitely of human interest. The a report that I read earlier this week showed statistically that lack of personalization is the number one reason why journalists will reject pitches. They want to reach that wide audience, so they need some sort of personalization. Okay, we've gone to the, the big six there. Yeah, Heather, uh, and we are, we are running up. out of time. Mm -hmm. Do you have anything yep. to add for one minute? If not, then we've reached the end of our show. Do you have anything very short, literally for under a minute, that you want to add? 
You've given right. us amazing information. Right. So I, I did talk about uh, the relevance that uh, the, the relevance to um, the journalist that you are pitching and also making it timely. And I so I do, do just want to mention that emails is still the king. Emails is still the easiest and best way to reach journalists. They really don't. Sixty nine percent of them statistically do not appreciate getting a phone call from a, somebody that they've never heard from. So reach out to people by email is the first and foremost easiest way. There's other ways, but that's the, the most recommended. As well as if people reach out or if they send a WhatsApp, it's more likely to get lost than with an email where they see it up in their uh, inbox. So, Heather, unfortunately, we've come to an end of a superb one and a half hours, 90 minutes with you. I thank you so much for being our guest on this Monday Motivation Spotlight. I mean, on this professional women's, we started with the Monday Motivation Spotlight. I'm so used to saying that every week now. It's like part of my automatic uh, lingo that comes out. So for those of you that joined, some of you joined for the first session, some of you joined for both. So thank you so much for joining. I'm Leslie Captain with our two guests that we had today. Hello, One was we started with Ken Bash. Disappear. Thank you. Hang on, please keep yourself muted. So thank you for to Kim, who was our uh, initial person and who was a sponsor of our Monday Motivation. Thank you so much to Heather for our delightful talk. This will be on YouTube, uh, unlisted initially until we decide to make it listed. So if any of you do want to watch this recording, please message me and I'll send you the link for the recording. And remember, networking is king. Pitching to journalists, remember to add that personalized story. Stories are good. Emotions, touch your emotions. Let them feel your story that they want to bring you in. And we look forward to seeing you on future events. Our next event, firstly, the Monday Motivation, as I said earlier, for those that joined really late, we've got Barbara Sofa next week, who is our guest. She is the Israel Director of PR for Hadassah Women's Organization. So she's our special guest for uh, Women's Day, International Women's Day. And our next professional women's will be, as I said earlier and in the chat, March 18th. So make sure that you save the date. And Heather, thank you. You were wonderful. We look forward to staying in contact. And I look forward to seeing you next time, either on the Monday Motivation or at our Professional Women's Networking Forum. Thank you for joining. I'm Israel Chai. May I'm Israel know very few challenges in the future, and may we grow from strength to strength. Have a wonderful, Amen. safe day. Bye-bye.